Right now we're at a threshold. That threshold is a very short space in time, and you're in it right now. Many people are out there preparing for things they don't quite know what they're preparing for. I'm going to give you some encouragement in that area. But it requires that each of you, uh, you really have to understand the nature of the beginning of this battle you're in. You, you've ended one where you were highly protected. Now's the time when you cross that threshold that you trust in Christ. It's either going to be absolute or it will not. The Lord will bring you to a place in your life, a crossroads, if you will, and the burden of making a choice that would seem to be permanent is likely starting to come into your mind. It seems like, for many of you, it likely seems like what you're doing now must be refined, permanent doing. And in these moments, you have to be careful, very careful. In most cases, when people attempt when they hit one of these crossroads, you are bombarded by advisors, many advisors. An advisor can be a person, it can be a book, it can be whatever media is out there. And this is where you have to be careful. You all know that Satan pursues the remnant of the seed of Israel, which is you, the believers in Christ. Satan actively pursues you in every way, form, or fashion that he can. In fact, Satan is darkness, and darkness is everywhere. The light is absent. So where there's no light, Satan is present. Satan is also equated to be confusion. He is the author of confusion. With the Father, there is clarity. At the throne of God, there is clarity. By way of the Holy Spirit, there's clarity. There is no confusion. Confusion is an element of Satan. It's an indicator as Satan is close, or attempting to pierce the covering for you. So long as you keep your belief in Christ, your true belief, not knowing of him, but believing in him, that is to say, to believe in his cause, to support his cause, to agree with his scriptures and not attempt to change them for the sake of self, nor to excuse any activities of oneself, to ease some of the corrective scriptures in the Bible, that's believing in him. Because all those who believe in him, naturally, they trust elements of, of, of what they know. The Lord has given each one of you a specific set of skills. You have a knowledge base. The question is, are you operating within that knowledge base and within those skills? Or are you attempting to equip yourself with greater things and leaving what he has given you behind? This you must be careful of. Where you are right now is where the Lord places you. Paul stated this when he said he asked God three times to remove a thorn from his side. Three times, yes, could it be removed? And three times he got the same response. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, what the Lord has done up to this point should be enough to satisfy some of those needs we have. The Lord knows what you need. He knows exactly what you need, but you're in a process. He knows what you need, and he is addressing it, but he has a process. And we must never forget about the process. Because if you forget, you may turn into something you never thought possible. And keep in mind those folks in Revelation who blasphemed God. That means they knew him. They were familiar with him. And they absolutely can't stand him because he's taking away what they have established in Revelation. In Revelation, you see the destruction, the unnatural destruction of a great many things. Normally, when a person is steeped, I'm going to say it's serpentry, meaning inside of them, they're truly a viper. They get upset when what they work so hard to build is wiped away. Even we, in our flesh, we get upset when what we have built is wiped away. And it exposes a portion of our flesh that we thought possibly we'd gotten rid of. But it's rising. Every remnant of your flesh in these days will begin to rise. And you have to be careful. Because situations in the world are designed to pull your flesh to the surface. 
In other words, to make you respond by flesh, that Satan may consume you. These happenings in the world, they're very strategic. If you look at some of these situations in the world, they are not chaotic in their presentation, nor in their happenings, but they're planned. They're planned, and it directly correlates to your spiritual trust that you have in the Messiah. So that when you have a high trust in the Messiah, something happens in the world to challenge that. A situation to divert your attention away from Christ into these elements of the world. To frustrate you and to ultimately cause you to question scripture. Because when you begin to question the Lord and when you stop saying, Lord, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I accept what you're saying because I trust in you. When you start questioning that, you're in trouble. Because it opens up a portion of your life where you begin to test the word of God to see if it's real or not. you got to be very careful of that because it comes in subtly. Satan never jumps out and says, boo. Satan works in small, methodical steps. He'll take his time. He's been here since the beginning. He's been full of iniquity from the beginning to this very moment. So we know he's patient. He works through the course of many generations, not just your lifetime, but many people's lifetimes. And he understands prophecy. And he'll do everything to pervert prophecy, cause people to go astray, to plant seeds in history. Because he knew that we were coming up, and he knew that we would have knowledge about some of these subjects. And he planted lies in history in an attempt to cause us to question the word of the Almighty. The warning is, be careful not to question the word of the Almighty, but be very patient that all things be revealed because they certainly will be fulfilled. Nothing of the Lord will ever fail. Nothing has ever failed. Even in your personal lives, you have a personal challenge. Some of you have sickness in your bodies. Some of you have family issues. There's something going on with everybody, and I'm telling you as part of a process, either for you or for those who are around you, but as part of a process, and the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. My hope is that you guys will be just absolutely prepared for all the changes that are happening. For example, all of you, everybody, the way you buy food is about to change. It's going to make some people angry. For others, it's going to make them point to another person and say, see how it feels. And what I'm talking about is all of you are going to receive a card, a card with limitations on it. So it doesn't matter how much money you have. You will buy your food by that card. You won't do it by cash money. When this takes place, there are going to be a great many people upset. Some people will even appear to be demoralized, outraged. Those will be the beginning of drastic changes. But the reasons for that card is accountability of resources in the world. Because the resources are not what they have been telling you. They're by no means what the markets have been propping up. And it's starting to show itself little by little. So emergency control measures have to be put in place so that people won't starve to death. They're going to control the resources. They're going to do so bluntly. Again, this will be the beginning of a change. But that's only the beginning many things that will change in your personal lives. As it turns out, a lot of people in the world, they say things, what's coming, this, that, and the other, but we ought to pay attention. When the world agrees to something, I'm telling you now, something is wrong with it. When too many people gravitate towards something, something is wrong with it. Jesus explained it best when he said, Woe to you! And all men think highly of you and all this, that, and the other, right? When they give you praises and all this, he said, for they did the same thing to the false prophets. They gravitated toward them, lifted them up above all else. See, we sometimes have things backwards because we'll ask the Lord, Lord, stop the attacks or stop this or stop that. But what's actually happening is this. If you have the light of Christ in you, you are an enemy of the world spiritually. And if you're an enemy of the world, then the world will supernaturally work against you. Not necessarily through people, 
but coordinated efforts that people are not aware of. For example, if you receive a notice, normally these bad news notices come coordinated by those in corporations down to the billing person, down to the mailman. They, they come to your mailbox in a time when you're really stretched, right, to the point of breaking in the first place. They have a saying in the world that uh, when something bad happens, it seems like everything bad happens. That's one of the enemy's tactics. He does not face you when you're strong. He kicks you when you're down. So what does the Lord give guide? He gives counseling on this. And what did he tell us to do? Don't allow yourselves to fall to that level. Because if you fall to that level, that comes from not trusting in the Messiah. And this word trust must be qualified within all of us. These things we're about to go through, they're going to bring that trust out. It's almost impossible for a person to do it on their own. It takes much chastisement and many trials for a person to actually trust wholeheartedly. But through this process, it'll begin to work out. You'll notice that change, but be warned, there are a lot of people who you know who are going to be spiritually compromised frustrated to the point where they will no longer affiliate with you. It'll seem like they won't keep the faith because we also occupy the days of the falling away. People are falling away already, just not in the way that you think. It's not going to be blatant. It's not going to be something that people can notice. Take note of the Bible when it states many false prophets are going to come. Now, a false prophet by the eye is someone who looks holy but believes in error. A false prophet is somebody who speaks by their feeling, not by the Holy Spirit. Many false prophets coming means they have a word from something that appears just like the words of Christ, but they will be slightly deviated. Even right now, there are plenty who give a word, but they don't teach about forgiveness. You cannot teach the word of God without teaching forgiveness. You cannot talk about the Word of God without talking about loving your neighbor as yourself. And if these things are absent, how then can that be from Christ? And I tell you, there are many false prophets out there already teaching a different word. Those who fall for that, they're going to fall for that. And remember, in the end, all who don't make it, Christ never knew them. And if he never knew them, it means they were not like you in the first place. They were just sown among you. These are the tares that were sown among the wheat. If Christ says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. If he never knew a person, they did not come from the living God. But they came from the dark one, Satan. And they're after you. And they're in the body. And if you're not careful, they're going to get in your head. They are the ones that suggest things that cause you to think about these small things. They turn you against somebody. So hear me close on this. So that you are truly spiritually armed. It's one thing to talk about the armor. It's another to utilize it. When people have conversations. Or even timed blocks of instruction. If they ever turn you against anybody. It is not from the father. Our father. Puts up with every foul thing we do because he desires that none of us perish outside of him that means he tolerates everything for our sakes because he desires us to make it he does not desire that anybody be condemned he has no desire like that these folks who sow these seeds of negativity ideas against your brothers and your sisters that's a dark message and if you listen to it, you're going to allow hostilities, a spirit that is very hostile, to come into your life. And it will wreak havoc. One of the first uh, pieces of evidence of one of these spirits is pride. It'll make you proud that you affiliate among certain people. God resists the proud, so he has nothing to do with pride. Pride is being proud of one's own accomplishments. In other words, it's very selfish. Our Father's not selfish. But he's giving. Pride has no placement with the Lord. When your pride is so bad because when you're proud of what you have done, when you're already rating your own doings above somebody else's, therefore you edify yourself above your neighbor. But the word says, esteem 
the other higher than yourselves. And that's one of the steps in wearing the armor. When you esteem everybody else as being higher than you. Truly to do not just in word. I'm speaking of things that are in the heart. Words are just words. What we are in the heart is the truth of us. Whether that be light or darkness, that is the truth of us. And out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. A person's conversation is what they're full of. This spirit is very evasive. It is consuming quite a bit. My hope is that it not prevail in this place, especially among you, that you're not sifted into that mindset. It is a fight. And it does not mean that those who practice these ways are totally condemned. No, but I can tell you something. They are losing a battle. They need, they require intercession. Daniel fasted and prayed and chastened himself for his people, and his people didn't even know about it. When you love your neighbor as yourself, when you love those around you, you'll do the same thing. You'll fast. You'll chasten yourself for their sakes. They won't know a thing. Because what you're doing is authentic. And when you do something authentic, the one thing we don't do is advertise. The world advertises. God's children need not do that. Because when you do a sincere work, you have no desire to tell a soul. Because what you're looking for are results from above. You're looking for intercession of the Father in somebody's life. If you requested repair of somebody or wholeness of somebody, that's what you're going to be looking for. But you certainly won't market yourself as being the one who prayed for so-and-so and did this and that because all of that is earthly stuff that is based in pride that too we had to be careful of as we cross this threshold we're going to do so in some very difficult situations politically people have selected their leaders they have they keep doing the same silly thing they keep looking to these leaders thinking they have an answer for them. Well, they don't. Many of your brothers and your sisters are caught up in politics. The many lies that are found in debates, false pretenses. They're good marketers. But you'll soon find out that um, any choice man makes in this world, they pick a leader. They're picking wrong. God appoints kings over a people based on his mind and his heart toward that people. You Christians have a say in that. The world does not. You do. But instead of petitioning, people argued. Instead of praying and fasting, people campaigned. And now we live, we have the product or we have the sum of our activities, our failure to intervene, our persistence in propping up men instead of the Messiah's ways. And America's picked another leader. But we picked a leader in a very controversial time. A leader that will not suit all Americans. And as a result of that, I'm just telling you now, once certain things brought to light, I'm talking about new things. Because the story is nothing like what's been promoted. Remember something. Please remember this. Holiness is pure. There's no confusion in it. There's no death in it. There's no violence in it. There's no compromise in it. There's no peace and holiness that would cause one to compromise values. That doesn't exist. Peace is established with the spirit of truth, not by compromising. The answer was never in a party, some political party, there is no man who has the right answer for everything, nor is there a man who has the answer for deliverance of God's children. Only God has that answer, and he has the way, and his way he will implement, and hardly anybody's going to like it, because the Bible tells us this. Even amongst the believers, even their faces are going to be somewhat stricken with confusion. But the Lord's way certainly is absolute. And people are going to quickly find out that what they did select is going to yield the same results as all the others. But this time with a twist, because you live in a world that's very hostile. You can never forget about the faith war that's currently underway. 
Christians, Muslims, Hinduism, all these things are coming to light. Faith wars is what you're about to see. And desperate countries, that's what you're about to see. Countries that are desperate. Desperate countries, full of confusion. They don't know what to do. Why? Because we're about to face some problems we've not faced before. And ironically, it's not going to touch your money. You'll have your money. You just won't have a big selection of product or merchandise to spend that money on. And in other places, there's going to be a control mechanism placed where you can only spend your money in certain ways. I hope that you guys are truly ready for that and prepared for that. But most importantly, hope that you're so focused on Christ and what he said would come to pass and the task that he's given us that these things don't overtake you and cause you to become hateful, vile, and angry just like all the rest because that's precisely what's happening. It does not matter what the cause is. Satan is raising up many different sides to pull Christians into it to change them. If, for example, it doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican, I'm telling you right now, if Christ is not involved, how can it be holy? In the examples in the Bible with Cyrus, with the Assyrian, with all these individuals God used, never once did he call them holy. They were his instruments, yes, but then so was a thorn bush, so was a cactus, so was a volcanic eruption, so was an earthquake. It doesn't mean the earthquake is holy or the volcano is holy or the thorn bush is holy. It means it's being used for the purpose of the creator. Whether judgment, punishment, whatever the case is, is being used by the Creator. But He told us to come out of the world. He told us to come out. In other words, come out of the ways of that place. Don't practice the ways of that place, have the same beliefs. If we believe in the Messiah, then we follow the way of the Messiah. Not by man's edicts or dictates, but by the Spirit of Truth. Not by some... So that these individuals today, they present pretty good cases. People have become experts at presentations, and that sifts a lot of people because they make things look plausible, they make it look structured and ordered, and you're drawn to that order and fooled by that same thing. Now, how many more times are we going to be fooled by order? The Lord is just, and he's given us a window, a pause, a break in events, but it only lasts for a short duration of time. We're near the end of it. Then a breakout moment. But it seems like everything is going wrong. And oh, by the way, all these things are just tangible things. The spiritual side of things, are we truly ready to tackle that? Hopefully in the knowledge drop, people will be able to read the materials and glean from that some spiritual guidance from the Word of God. But it's probably not what you think it is. It's not some exciting pieces of writings it tells you about some species from a different planet. No, we tackle the truth in there from experiences, from real battles, from people who died to defend certain things, wars that you don't even know about, things that happen underneath your feet on a daily basis that you have no clue about, the dangers that have tried to come topside, that have cost even many more lives. These are the days to be very careful. One sure way to stay on track is to put Christ first. Not in your fears, not in your ambitions, not in your sicknesses, not in your wholeness, but Christ first. His cause first. To love the Lord is to love what he did. And you have to ask yourself, do you truly love what he established in the earth, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you truly agree with it? And everybody, no matter who they are, ought to be given a chance to repent. Do you believe in that? Or are you one of those who has condemned somebody already, saying there's no hope for them? It's not going to make you look smart. It's going to make you look foolish, naive in the works. Believe me, I know that very well. However, if you work by way of the Messiah then every promise of the Messiah you'll be part of, every single one. And the Bible teaches us that reaping comes in this lifetime. So some of you are due some pretty heavy things on the good side, and you must have it before you close your eyes here on this earth. Many of you will have a 
bountiful blessing in a very short time space. But the Lord keep or prepare you for that blessing. A blessing from the Lord is just like wisdom from above. It is without regret. You're not going to end up regretting what the Lord is doing. But I'll tell you this. If you don't recognize a blessing from above, you'll regret it ever came into your life. If the Lord finishes his process with you, which I hope is true, one of the end results is you're not going to want something the way you see it. You'll desire that the Messiah be pleased with whatever he establishes. I'll say it again. You're not going to get excited, nor you're not going to be moved by establishing something you see or something you want. But you surrender all of that over to the Messiah, which means it's not your concern anymore. That means you're doing your part, the best you can do, and all of us have been equipped with something. doesn't matter how great or small you think it is. All of us have been equipped with something. All of us have a task. If you work within those boundaries that the Messiah set, which is more freedom than the world could ever have, if you do that, then when the war starts, when the hostilities begin, when the weather takes an abrupt change, when the land masses are shaken apart more than one time, you'll have good placement. You'll have comfort from above. And some of you know by experience that in a time of great trouble like that, it's a good thing to have comfort from Christ.